Welcome to Off The Hanger. This week's guest is interior designer Susie Dixon. Now, if I could ask a quick favour before we get started. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, if you could leave a little rating, that would be much appreciated. And if you're watching over on YouTube, a comment would definitely not go amiss. I hope you enjoy this episode. Susie, thank you so much for being part of Off The Hanger. It's lovely to talk to you this morning. Hello, thank you so much for having me, Emma. This is really exciting. So you work as an interior designer, but I get the sense from your Instagram that you're actually just a pure creative at heart. Well, I used to actually be a stylist for about 15 years. I worked in fashion for a long, long time, and then I've ended up kind of landing more into interior design. Um, So there is a crossover, and it's very much, um, I've grown up around fashion. My mum was a designer at Topshop. And she bought many, many, many thousands of copies of Hello magazine so I, and Vogue as well. So I grew up um, with my mum sort of inspiring. And, and obviously with the magazines, I was able to kind of flick through those as a kid and was totally in love with this world. So, yeah, there's definitely a crossover. And is there a piece from your childhood that you really remember? It's, um, it's a funny story, actually. It goes back to when I was about seven years old and I was at a birthday party and it was a really good friend's birthday and she was wearing the most amazing puffball, classic 80s, like puffball black velvet with a gold sort of puff ball gown dress. Completely, I mean, elaborate for a seven-year-old's birthday party. But I just remember seeing her, my jaw dropping. And I was like, I need to have that dress. Like, this is, this is just ridiculous. I need to have this dress. And so on the way home, I was sort of planting the seed with mum, like, do you think you might be able to make that dress for me and she was really not into the idea I think she probably thought it was very inappropriate for a seven-year-old so what I did end up with which is actually pretty amazing and you'll see by the photograph is uh she made me a petrol blue velvet dress with very structured shoulders a white lace collar and a three-tier kind of skirt drop skirt at the bottom which um wasn't quite the same thing but I do remember wearing it a couple of Christmases and I absolutely loved it. And I think it was it was more it was more special because my mum had designed it especially for me. So I think that has to be my earliest fashion favourite memory of all. I love that. You get the bespoke piece and it is just something <laughs> that no one else has. I think that's what makes things more special, isn't it? When it's something that you know that only you have. I think that makes Absolutely. It really- Absolutely. And I have to say throughout all of my time at sort of art college and uh, move up, moving up to London, my mum made a lot of my clothes for me. And I used to source a lot of fabrics from all of my travels and wherever I used to go. And then I used to get back to see mum and I'd say, remember that trouser pattern that we used? Um, I'd love to make those trousers with this fabric. And she'd give me a look and be like, that's really thick curtain fabric. And I'd be like, but won't they look amazing? And she'd go and make them for me. And honestly, I used to have my mates just saying to me, where do you get your clothes? And I used to really smugly just sort of say, well, actually, my mum made them. And they're like, would she make me some? And I was like, um, probably not. <laughs> it, was, it was always my like little upper hand. You know, no one else is going to have these. But I was really, really lucky for that. And actually, my mum and I bonded a lot over those times where she'd be making things for me. I'm sure she'd have a different... Um, opinion on it now she probably just wish I never bothered asking her but there you go oh that's incredible though I love that I love that she had the skill and the creativity and that you had the creativity of spotting pieces of fabric and going this would be great for this and that's amazing I love that idea it was a good collaboration (laughs) the perfect collab have you got an (laughs) oldest thing in your wardrobe do you tend to hang on to things I do. In fact, actually, it was very recent that my grandmother passed away and left me an incredible Art Deco emerald ring um, and some emerald uh, and diamond earrings, actually. And when mum sort of gave them to me and said, your your grandmother really wanted you to have these, she would also be really OK and probably quite honoured if you were to have them redesigned or make them work for so you would wear them more. And I've always had my eye on this incredible designer called Tessa Metcalf, jeweler, not designer. Um, And I was on her waiting list for, I think, four and a half years to get this piece made. And actually, I don't know if you can see it. So what's so clever about Tessa is that she takes an heirloom, but she so the ring is the actual piece inside. She didn't take it apart. She didn't do anything with it. 
it used to be worn that way round. And then she's basically enclosed it with her pigeon claws, which is her statement. And she's added some sapphires and some diamonds that were from the earrings. And then the little surprise is the ruby that's actually on the end there, which I had no idea she was doing. It was one of those little surprises where when I went to pick it up, she said, can you see anything that you weren't expecting? And I saw this little ruby and was like, so that is my most treasured um, item because it's got all of my grandmother in there. And it's completely kind of my style now. And every time I look at it, I think of her and what an amazing woman she was. So it's really cherished and very special. But you're right, that is so special to have a piece that was so prolific in her life, then given to you, but then made into something that, like you said, you're actually going to wear. Because I think quite often we do get passed on these pieces. And I've got a jewellery box full of bits of pieces that I've been, you know, um, given. And I think, well, that's not very me. I don't know when I'd actually wear that. They're just now kind of sitting there. So to have them reworked is an amazing idea. Yeah, I, th- I think it's important that you can take it to the next, you know, and then I'll give it to my daughter and hopefully she might want to change it up and do something different with it. So it sort of travels throughout the family and becomes really personalised. I think it's really important. Um, and I, I absolutely love it. I smile every time I look at it. So I'm very lucky. And I love that the idea that they gather stories as they're passed on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Embed their own stories within there. What's the piece in your wardrobe you would say gets the most compliments? I think it probably has to be my Topshop coat, believe it or not. It's something to do with the colour and the texture. And I get people just stopping me in the street saying, can I give you a hug? And I'm like, well, why not? (laughs) COVID's all over and done with now. Um, you know, for a high street, for a high street purchase, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's an absolute classic shape. Um, it's a beautiful piece and I just feel like it kind of, it highlights any outfit, even if you've gone a bit sort of safe and you're wearing a lot of black underneath, it suddenly just gives it that pop of color. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's one of my faves. I love it. And I love the bold color really must work so well with your hair. Just really yeah, I mean, has it's that a bit great crazy. Color. <laughs> that great pop, that contrast, it looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I do love it. I do love it. It's, um, I mean, you can't really see it properly, but I mean, it's a bit like Kermit the Frog, really. It's, uh, it's, it's, oh, it's a, great. It's, it's a great bit. texture as well. I love it. Are you, somebody that, coat. <laughs> are you somebody that spends quite a lot of money on clothes? Do you have a most expensive item? It's a good question. So, My theory, I think as I started collecting kind of designer things and like looking at vintage things, um, not always being able to afford uh, when I was younger, afford the things that I really loved, I kind of decided that the most practical way of buying designer clothes was to buy things that didn't come in and out of fashion really fast. So where I would spend my money would be shoes and handbags and jewellery, which actually when you can mix it in with high street, more up to date looks, um automatically makes the look more expensive looking makes it look more sort of elevated um so i feel like you know i've got some earrings from Mew Mew, which are an absolute classic i mean that with anything is um is a no yeah it's just a no-brainer i mean they're quite big they're not sort of everyone's cup of tea but I actually wore those to my 50th with a huge tinsel dress which i've i've sent you a photo actually um and so I think the trick is for me is is to have that beautiful handbag or to have those nice pieces of jewellery and you could wear it with absolutely anything. I don't really follow trends, but, you know, there are certain designer brands that you could buy something and you really don't feel like you can wear it after a, a few months because it's kind of so statement. It's so one of those trends and it's so particular that actually it's kind of hard to wear later on. So I try to avoid those kind of um those moments and invest in things that I will use forever, even when they become vintage. And then I can hand them down to my daughter and she'd probably be very happy about that. That's such a good idea. I think that is so important if you are investing a lot of money into a piece to make sure that you're actually going to get your wear out of it. And like you say, that you can then pass it on as well. Absolutely. So one of those, which I have to show you, is my Louis Vuitton monogram graffiti bag which I have to say I haven't owned it since it first came out because I was pretty young then um but I love it I mean you can tell that there's a theme here I do really like neon (laughs) 
Um, and this bag is is such a great. I mean, bags have got so small these days that this is a proper good out in London in meetings. I can put my iPad in there. I can fit everything in here, um, and it's it's a classic. And I I simply love it. I haven't had it that long. I've probably had it about six months, and I haven't stopped using it that whole entire time. I love that. And you're right. Bags are not very small. But the price hasn't got smaller. The smaller the bag, the more expensive it is. And I'm like, but I can't fit anything in it. When am it's I going to have a so bag? It's so true. I was talking to somebody the other day who'd bought a little Jacquemus bag. And I said to her, well, tell me all you can fit in that is a lipstick. And she said, I know. And I was like, so where does everything else go when you go out? I mean, that sounds like a really practical question coming from me. But um, it's true. The prices haven't gone down as they get smaller. The prices have increased and the practicality <laughs> has way decreased as well. So, I mean, it's it's just one of those things, isn't it? It is. I'm here for the big bags. I'm a big bag kind of person. I've always got a world of stuff. <laughs> You'll love this one then. This this My husband worked at Burberry for a long time and I had my eye on this. And it's the reversible... No tartan tote and again it's got the neon inside i mean this this is very statement but i mean i just don't stop using it i mean it just gets so heavy when you fill it up though it's like you put three or four things in it and suddenly you're like okay i've committed to carrying this around all day now but i (laughs) i love it i won't ever stop using it it's just a classic I often do that. I often regret my life choices. I take a very big bag and I fill it full of things at the beginning of the day. And by the end of the day, I'm like, oh my God, why did I do this? It's so heavy. (laughs) Accumulate more stuff because people go, do you want a bag? And you're like, no, I've got a big bag. I'll just put it in there. And then you end up with all this stuff. (laughs) And then you need to go and see a chiropractor the next day because you're literally kind of all misshapen. Exactly. All a bit wonky. What's the newest piece you've got in your wardrobe? That is a good question. I think actually it's got to be another handbag. Sorry, Emma. It's all right, love it's, a bag. Oh, it's, I love it's a green bag. Beautiful Prada bag. Yeah. Um, I haven't used it all that much because I don't know, sometimes these are more like works of art, right? Yes. But when I do, I it's it's a very thought out day. I know where I'm going. I know it's you know it's not going to require too much sort of moving around of it. But it is. This is this is my absolute babe. I love it. I mean, this green is just insane. Oh, um, that color so, is a dream. That is gorgeous. Yeah, for it, it's like a forest sort of forest green, emerald green. It's it's just a classic. And that with the coat is just like. It's too much. I mean, I am literally walking into the Muppet Show at that point, but, you know, there we go. <laughs> There's no such thing. There's no such thing as too much. I think that's just gorgeous. You know, I'd rather be way over than way under. Oh, well, that's that's me to a T. You've got me there. <laughs> Are you quite sentimental when it comes to the pieces in your wardrobe? Do you have something you consider to be your most sentimental piece? I think it has to be my grandmother's ring. Um, and actually, I didn't show you that this is the other ring that she made from the leftover parts of the earrings, which is, again, the thread of the it's the pigeon claws. Um, so both of those, and probably actually quite a lot of the rings that I have, and I tend to wear them all as one big kind of clump. I think a lot of my rings I've got from my travels when I lived in Canada for a little while and um, lived in Amsterdam. I sort of collect special sort of hand treasures. Um, so there probably will be my you know whole collection of, of special pieces. I love that. And I love that because they are so wearable, it doesn't matter what outfit you've got on, you can always wear one of them or all of them. There's lots of you know ways that you can keep integrating them into your wardrobe. Exactly, exactly. It depends on, uh, I think, what coat of armour I need to wear that day, whether I'm going into a meeting that I'm like, do I need to be really fierce today? Do I need to wear the whole lot so I'm ready for, you know, I'm ready to fight? Or do I just want to take a little bit of my granny with me today and, you know, go in easy? Depends on the mood. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Have you got a piece in your wardrobe you would say most sums you up? Oh, that's a very good question. I've got quite is a few neon. pieces that I would. Is Sorry. it neon? 
It probably is, it is neon. neon. I'm gonna, <laughs> I think it's probably my Jacquemus pink blazer because it's oversized, which is like my favorite silhouette. I'm basically, if you were to ask me to describe my style, I'm like a futuristic sartorialist. I love nice. tailoring, but I, it always has to have a bit of a twist. It might be bright colored or it might have some metallic or it might have some brightness to it. I'm kind of like a futuristic tailored warrior. Um, so yeah, most of my clothes are either kind of bright or structured and that's kind of my, that's kind of my vibe. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's definitely that. Such a great piece. Love that color. Thank you. Now it's quite well known on Off The Hanger that I am a disaster. Um, and wardrobe malfunctions happen to me on a very regular basis. I wouldn't say so much fashion faux pas, but definitely the wardrobe malfunctions. I am a fully fledged member of the club. Now, would you like to join my club? Do you have a wardrobe malfunction or a fashion faux pas that you can share? A hundred percent. I have one. So they were a high street brand. I'm not going to name them. Um, walking to go and meet my husband for supper. We lived in Amsterdam, so you were either cycling or walking, and the heel of my boots, big heel, just snapped clean off. And I thought, I'm not going to ruin tonight. I'm not going to ruin this night. It's going to be a really special evening. I'm just going to absolutely wing this. So I put the heel in my handbag, and I tiptoed <laughs> for the rest of the evening. We didn't go out partying afterwards. We didn't go out for a dance, because that would have been ridiculous but um I just walked around on tippy toes on one of my feet for the rest of the night and actually I was pretty proud of it I nailed it um and actually it was a foot workout at the same time so I was winning <laughs> what's, your, what's your latest what's your la now you've like, made me really intrigued what's your latest malfunction then oh the latest malfunction um Oh, I went somewhere the other day with my uh, dress on backwards. So that was fun. <laughs> I literally didn't realise. I left the house. I got in the car. I went to the services. I got to work. I went and got went and got a pass from the security to then go into the car park, got into the car park, and I was like, something's really itching on my neck. And when I went like that, the label was there. <laughs> <laughs> literally. I'd taken myself to school. I'd literally, I'd had this day on for, this dress on for a good, like, you know, half a day. On That's backwards. okay, though. I don't think anyone would have noticed. If you had it inside out and the wrong way around, that's a different yeah. story. It wasn't, it wasn't ideal. There was definitely some details that you could tell that it was backwards, but I think my coat was kind of hiding it well. Um, Amazing. So yeah, it's just, it's a standard, a standard running joke that something, there's always something that's happened. But to I be love able... It to tiptoe because I've broken many a heel and it's really obvious if you've broken your heel because you end up doing that awful kind of walk yeah. walk. to be able to tiptoe and keep that on an even level you've got some skills well luckily I do do a lot of uh, hot yoga and we have to stand <laughs> on tippy toes and kind of squat down so I was like wow actually I can really say that this yoga practice is really helping me in this moment right now so I was like Excellent. Note to self, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling the benefits. <laughs> definitely chuffed to bits for myself right now. Pat on the back. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier that you like to spend money more on bags and shoes. Have you got a favourite pair of shoes? Now, I couldn't choose. I've got two. Is that okay? It's absolutely fair. I couldn't choose. Honestly, if so, I had my shoes, that would be like picking a there's child. A, there's a theme. There's a theme. So 39th birthday, went out for supper with some friends. I've got the the Vetamon sock boot, Useful. which is, it's got this bizarre cigarette lighter heel. I mean, you think they wouldn't be comfortable, but these are the most comfortable shoes. You almost feel like you're not wearing heels at all. They're so I just love them. You can wear them with absolutely anything. They kind of end up being my sort of winter, you know, if I'm wearing with like a sort of cigarette trouser or even a dress, they're just amazing. And I love them so much. 
And then flash to the next year where I had an insanely crazy 40th in Amsterdam. All my friends flew over from the UK and from Canada and Australia. It was just crazy. The theme was, I think it was sparkle. And the boys were in platform boots with makeup. We had men with glittered beards. All the girls were either in latex or sequins. It was amazing. I was in a tinsel dress with my David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust platform boots. I mean, they're just bonkers. I've not got to wear them since, but I'm gunning for the next party where I can get these I can get these involved because they're just they're just crazy. I love them both. I don't think you can go wrong with a bonkers metallic shoe. I am totally here for it. There are many a pair in my collection and I am right there with you. <laughs> I love it. Such great advice. Oh, it's been so lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for being part of Off The Hanger. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to follow and leave.